so um today is uh 16th of uh, july 2023 that's uh which is also a sunday so i want to educate uh, you guys how you can diagnose test and uh, also or uh, or uh, uh, the placed cooling fan for z9 and um, okay you could say z9 and 407 now what do i mean by z9 this is a facelifted uh for 07 2005 to 2010 productions so uh the engine cooling fan or uh, uh cooling fan for the radiator but you just regard it as engine cooling fan so the fan is basically same with 407 unlike the z8 607 so z8 607 has similar fan uh, system of that of uh, d9 which is 406 so for the z9 uh, it's the same so what i'm going to show you now you can apply it on d2 which is 407 i don't think there's any other project vehicle that have this uh, fan system it's actually a very poor design you know I'm going to, uh, as I'm doing the video, you'll see why it's not uh, the best fan Pojo I've used. Uh, for example, the fan, you know, it has a motor there. And um, so for other models of Pojo cars, the, the speed of the fan or the percentage of the fan speed is actually determined by an external factor. So whatever that controls the fan speed is independent of the fan. While this of that of Z9 and the D2, the the whatever that controls the fan or determines the fan speed is actually integrated inside the fan. So when that um, uh, what we call it resistor, the you know, start, whatever or uh, module, there there are some models that have. Um, fan control module that looks like an ECU mini ECU I mean so when that component now fails on the Z9 or the D2 you'll be forced to change the entire fan unlike uh, the other Pojo models that what whatever that controls the fan or what determines the fan speed fails you don't need to touch your fan you just replace that component you know so in this case um the fan will have to go so what is happening on this so i'm going to use my car to do that which is my z9 v6 manual so what's wrong with this fan the fan is working but it's not uh working uh fully very well um you know the fans so are the control of the fans are something we call lower speed, higher speed, low speed, high speed, depending on how you want to call it. So, there are two uh, um, controls on the fan. So, depending on uh, the vehicle systems of the engine cooling system, one particular component of that resistor will control the lower speed of the fan why the other controls the higher speed so there are cases where the resistor or uh, the part of the resistor that control the high speed fails so what will now happen uh the high the fan will no longer exceed let's just say maybe like 50 um, percent the speed of the fan will no longer exceed 50 percent so it won't spin that very fast but it, it will keep it run but so what will happen is without uh ac the car will not overheat but as soon as you switch on the ac and uh, you're on a lower speed on a traffic jam or the vehicle is stationary you get a point the fan speed needs to increase to that higher speed so what will happen is the car will start overheating because whatever that control that fan high speed is no longer working likewise uh let's assume the lower speed fan control whatever that control the lower speed that fails so what will now happen is when you start the vehicle uh put on the ac normally when you put on ac 
what will start spinning at that time is the lower fan speed that is supposed to start spinning at that very time when you uh, the vehicle is first started and you put on the AC the high speed won't come up immediately it needs to take some time and uh, most time it stays off it's only when the ambient temperature is very hot um, then that's when maybe the lower speed fan will spin maybe like five minutes the high speed will come up uh spin like a minute or two then goes back to the lower speed so when whatever that control the lower speed the fan speed has stopped working so what will now happen is it will not take longer for the fan to come up so but when it comes i saw the lower speed to first start it will jump straight to the high speed so um right now on this vehicle the lower because uh the resistor is integrated inside the fan motor it's part of it for right now um i don't think you can separate them they are like i said integrated in it so once that particular resistor fails no matter how good the fan motor is the fan braid is you just have to replace the fan However, it's possible, what I'll do is, uh, at the end of this video, I'll make an attempt to see if I can, I'll dismantle the fan completely, see if I can, if there's a way I can separate that resistor from the fan motor. Because it's actually, uh, like, it's as if it's permanently attached on it or part, built together with the motor. So I will look at it, I will show you the video, so if it's possible to separate it, fine. If it's not possible, but the point, it doesn't even matter. Because they don't sell, even if uh, it can be separated, the resistor from the fan motor. You won't be able to even get that resistor because they don't sell it separate. So if you, if once it fails, maybe the part of it that controls the high speed or the low speed fails, you are buying another fan. So what's the point changing the, the resistor? Even if it's separate, you can separate it. So what's the point changing it? Since you are purchasing another fan that both the high and low speed are working, so you can also swap it, the entire fan in rather than trying to dismantle, remove this. So that's the point. So that's why I regard it as a poor design because for other models, you don't need to touch your fan when the lower speed resistor fails or high speed resistor fails, or maybe uh, there, are there are models uh, like the ones with the EPC engines. Uh, uh, some thesis, mo thesis model and the rest is just one module that controls both the high and the low. So when the high lower part of the speed starts working, you just have to change that module because the same module controls both the low and the high. Even though the high might still be working, but you just change the module. So which makes it much easier to diagnose, much easier and cheaper, easier to also replace that module than removing the entire fan and also much cheaper than buying the entire fan than the module so the z9 this fan module they use on the 47 uh, uh, and the uh, facility 607 is very very poor because now like i say once any of this uh, lower or higher speed phase you are changing the entire fan they say to you how good it is so like i said in this case the lower speed has stopped working now, how did I know? Remember, now I'm always concentrating on AC in you know, all my cars. So, it's only a few occasions, like let's assume uh, in the morning, the weather is very, very cold, as in so cold that it's pointless to switch on the AC. Still, I will not wind the window down, I'll leave it up. So, I will just put on the, uh, the blower only with the AC compressor off and drive off. Uh, sometimes I'm even no need to even put on the compressor until I get to my destination. But it depends, as you know, as the days as I'm driving, it may become get, start getting warmer. Then maybe like after five or ten minutes drive, I decide I might decide to put on the compressor. So, um, but like I said, my windows are always up no matter what. So you know, as much so I could say generally. I'm always on the compressor is always running it's only very few occasions uh, especially in the morning or very late in the evening when the weather is very cold okay now 
I noticed there was a time I when I first this I first observed this I was start the car uh, in the morning ambient temperature might be maybe 27 25 uh, so at that time the uh, external air coming in will not be enough to shield the, the car interior so I put on the AC before I drive off or as I'm driving off I put on the the AC um, or before I even drive off I put it on so I now observe by the time I get to my destination, probably like 20 15 minutes uh, into the drive, the temperature gauge takes so long to come up. It takes so long to come up to what I mean, come up to get to 90 degrees. Sometimes it doesn't even get to that 90 degrees before I get to this destination, which is weird because I know the distance is supposed to normally supposed to, but on this very car. Recently, he stopped doing that. So it's as if the car was no longer had thermostat or that the fan was uh, connected directly to be running with the engine when the engine is running. So, so what I did one day was, uh, I think like that same day or the evening that I observed this. It probably started before I took notice of it. So I started the car. The weather was very cold. Put on the AC. I left the door open. Put on the AC. So, I wanted to know whether the low speed was working. One hour immediately, the high speed started spinning. The fan speed increased. It didn't even start like, you know, immediately jumped to high speed. So, that was, uh, and without, I didn't even need to plug in my scan to, to test, to scan anything. That was it. So, it was the best, uh, the fastest way of diagnosing to know uh, if the high, lower speed actually still works. So, uh, that was even enough. So it's ever since then. So now, so it now started be working. So the point is, the, the fan now works as if it's factory uh, is connected directly to as in bypass and run directly because it always stays on high speed all the time. It's only like when without the AC, yeah, in that case, uh, the fan will not come up until when it's needed. But now, because I'm always on AC, but of course, why in motion? It might go off because at that time, uh, the breeze coming in might be enough. But then, the lower speed is supposed to stay on for a long time than the high speed. Because if it was on lower speed, the temp it will allow the temperature to come up much quicker to 90. But because it's high speed, so it's spinning much faster, so it's cooling down the 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 coolant in the system in the, on the in the radiator and the inside the engine much quicker so uh, making it difficult to warm up very fast take a, pay attention to all this in i explaining you know before i even go into the work itself so uh, this is about how you can test or diagnose to know what your issue is so that's the fastest way to do that to know if your low speed work is working you need your ac must be in good condition this is not just about z9 or d2 it's just every other project car it's the fastest way because the high speed should not come up immediately it shouldn't even if the weather is very hot you put it on put on the ac go to the front of the car immediately and be looking at the fan the lower speed will cause spin or spin for maybe a minute or a few seconds before it now gets to the high speed the fan speed will now increase of course you can tell from the sound that the car the fan is now spinning very high maybe at 80 percent or so but if you press it immediately and um, it jumps then then so now let's how do you diagnose uh if the high speed is the one that failed but the lower speed is working there are so many ways you can tell usually what will happen is uh, when you are ac and you are driving you are inside traffic and the upper temperature is up you see your car will start overheating you see the temperature gauge you start going higher than the usual place it stays maybe between 90 to 100 you see it start going up going towards the red zone or however depending on the calibration of your uh, coolant temperature gauge you know where it usually stays when everything is normal after a few minutes of running you know so if you start exceeding that what you do is switch off the ac observe if it draws back there's high possibility that that's uh the fan if it's 407 or 607 phase lifted model uh the the part that controls the high speed has failed 
but the lower speed might still be working. But if it's uh, other model that have uh, external or independent uh, module, resistor, or whatever that control the speed of the fan, then it means the parts that control the high speed has failed. So the, even though it might come and look at the fan, it's still running. It doesn't mean it's running at the capacity that is needed at that time or at the speed is needed at that particular uh, coolant temperature, or ambient temperature, or whatever. So in that case, your car will start vibrating. So you observe that most time, once it starts happening, if you are dry, not driving with, if the AC is off, it will overheat. Once you put on AC, it starts going on. So observe, check the fan at that time. Does it spin now? Because once the car starts vibrating, the fan is supposed to start spinning at very high speed. So if it's not doing that, even though the fan is still working, then know that the higher speed uh, control has failed. So in order to you, if it's the 407 or 607, you have to change the fan. If it's the other model, uh, you have to change the model. Though there are cases where the issue might not have been the control of the fan, but the fan motor itself. Let's assume um, the bearing there has, has wall become weak. Uh, what will not happen if you, if you start the vehicle, put your ear close to the fan. As the fan is spinning, you can hear the the friction going on there. Quack, quack, quack. In that case, most likely the problem is the fan, not even the control. Because once the fan fails, uh, the bearing becomes that weak or the motor is uh, it will no longer spin that fast. No matter how good the the resistor is for the high speed, you won't be able to run it that fast anymore. So that's at least you have idea where you can start your diagnosis. So that's one of the ways. Then there's another way you can test. This what I'm saying now is how you can diagnose even without diagnosis too. That's like my your scampus too. Um, the other ways you can test if your high speed is working well. But that will not require uh, going to uh, opening the bonnet, then you disconnect your CTS connector, coolant temperature sensor uh, connector. Disconnect it, start the vehicle. Once you do that, uh, of course your temperature gauge will not work well. If you see it immediately, it will shoot close, most likely to the red zone or it won't come up at all. Then your vehicle start warning you coolant temperature too high or coolant temperature uh, not found or you know it will get the warning on your vehicle that something is wrong with your cooling system. Then the ECU immediately will start spinning. Your fan will come up very high speed at very high speed. It is expected you must come up immediately at a very high speed at that time once you disconnect the CTS. So if your fan doesn't come up at very high speed, but if it's spinning, but it's spinning very low, then it means that the fan, uh, the high speed control has failed, or the fan itself actually has failed, not necessarily the high speed. So, but uh, the reason why, uh, that's like, I don't usually go that route, the disconnecting the CTO, because um, it, it will make you, after you are done with everything, you have to push system to clear it off. There are sometimes you do it even when you plug it back. The that issue will stay there. The fan will keep on it constantly until you have to put a system, put your uh, scam uh, tool to clear that fault because at that time to store the fault that something is wrong with your fan. So if you don't clear that fault, the fan will keep behaving that way till you clear it with your scan tool. So, but. Um, but I'm saying like in emergency, maybe you don't have a scan tool or you have, but it is not with you at that time. And maybe the, your AC is not working and your car started overheating and but the fan is working. So the best way to find to do like that, because as long as your high speed is working and your car is overheating, then it has nothing to do with fan. So the best way to find out at that time, maybe disconnect the CTS. If the high speed comes up, then uh, it means um, your fan is intact. The, well, the cause of the overheating has nothing to do with the fan. Okay, so other things, um, is there another way you can do the diagnosis? Uh, like uh, if you want to test the high, um, the high speed fan without doing all those things, yeah, it will take longer. You can start the car, put on the AC, 
Maybe the temperature is very hot. Ambient temperature is start. It will start with the low speed. It may take a while before high speed comes up. If it doesn't come up, but that can, it, yeah, it, it probably may take, I, I wouldn't have, but that one would take so long because if the ambient temperature is not that so hot, no matter what you do, the high speed may not come up because the lower speed, low speed at that time is enough to cool the engine with the AC running. So it's not like, it, uh, it's, to me, it's just a waste of time. Um, so, uh, but of course, the fastest way of finding out is uh, diagnostic too. Um, though for the first 7 d 2 this thing, um, if your low speed stops working, it might be difficult to set, get it because when you try it, uh, the high speed will come up at that time. So we will know whether it's working or not. Um, because the option of testing the low speed on the 407 is not there. It's actually the high speed that the option for test it is there. Um, I'm going to try it on this Z9 after I've done the bat uh, replacement of the fan to see if we um, can actually test the lower speed. Uh, because if I, I know if I test it now, even if the option to test the low speed is there, if I test it now, it won't work because it, I've confirmed that it's not working. It's only the high speed. So I'll do that after this so that you guys will see whether it's possible or not. So uh, if, if the lower speed is 40, Low speed fan control is 40 on 407, Z9607. It may not be that easy to use the scan tool to know if it's bad or not. So the best option is what I explained. Use your AC to find out. Or maybe disconnect your CTS to find out if the high speed will... Uh, no, CTS will not work on that time. Um, it will work because immediately you put the CTS uh, connector start the car or with the car running if you do that immediately you jump to high speed so you won't even know whether your low speed is working so that cts one is if you are testing whether your high speed is working but for low speed um i think it was much better with the ac because uh, meaning that uh, you put on the ac immediately uh, you check whether the low speed comes off first, spin for some minutes or seconds before the high speed. But if you jump immediately to high speed, okay. So I think I have that's more like a diagnosis now. So I've explained everything, so I don't need to start showing you in the engine bay how to do that. So, um, so let's uh, start the, the, the replacement now, okay. So I said this is Z9. Um, this is 9 So um, let me start from here. Let me test some of this. Okay. Oh, these are two bars I've so been working with. So um, okay, this is the fan. And um, now. This fan, like I said, is based almost okay. Let me remove. I'll need to remove this. Uh, I need to remove this so I can be able to show you guys what exactly I mean. What the? You have to be careful here so you don't end up making things. Is it a clip here? Um, okay. hmm. I really need that two pounds. Here. Okay, so this is the fan. Uh, hold on. I need uh, maybe something here. While I'm be doing this uh, replacement, I'll be probably doing cut and off. Uh, no, off and on on the video so that um, as I'm doing this with my all by myself. <sighs> so that uh, I'm able to handle. Okay, so this one comes up easily. Uh, so this is the fan assembly unit or chamber. Uh, so you can see. 
is the pan. Uh, so now the difference between that of uh, 407 and uh, 607 is um, Z9607 for the 407 the fan wiring harness is very short uh, this is the chamber where uh, the relays and uh, every other connectors are usually uh, placed and arranged because the wire is short but for the Z9 even though the fan like basically the same but then the wiring connector is long because where they place the fan the relay and the rest is here you can see this is the fan relay so the wire is very long so from here all the way to this place so what i'm going to do in this case i'm not going to bother trying to remove because remember the fan is the wire is attached on the fan motor so uh, that resistor that is integrated on the motor. So rather than remove, removing the fan and then try to pull, remember the wire goes all the way to this place to where the delay is. That is going to create a lot of mess and time and all that. So I don't want to touch this wiring harness with this relay. So what I'll do is I'll pull out the fan, then um, I'll now detach the connector from this fan motor. So that this wire harness stays where it is. So I disconnect the fan motor, swapping another fan motor with the blade, and then connect the the wiring connector, the one that is originally on the car, and then mount the fan back. But of course, if you are buying a Z9 fan, so it's going to come with that wire, the long wire to this point. But like I said, don't bother, it's going to be a mess. I mean, you can see a lot of things you have to remove pull out before you can get to where this uh, relay is so that's what I'm going to show so in other words, video is also going to show how you can actually uh, remove the connector on this fan which is more difficult than the one I did on the, the 407 cook so, which is this one to the vehicle so so I'm going to start now. What I'm going to do is, uh, um, I'm going to of course, see if I can remove, uh, just remove this so that this one can be easier to, I may not need to remove it completely anyway, but I could if I want to, um, which part of this. So I'll just shift it, pull this bolt out, shift it, the allen key, so I can use the fan, then bring it up. Uh, the fan might be easier to be removed from under, not up, because of this, um, what do you call it? the power CLL line, which is might block it or make it difficult for the fan to come up from the front. But we'll see. Uh, but it's most likely it's going to come down from under. So I may end up jacking the vehicle so that I'll be more space to pull the fan out and to uh, push the other one in. Uh, I think I may have to mount the camera somewhere here so that uh, it's easier to so doing this. Okay, so let me uh, remove the fan first and then I'll show you guys how to remove that wiring connector. Alright. Okay, um, there's something I forgot to show you guys. So it's a uh, high, uh, like I explained, how you can test with the AC on to know whether the low speed is still working or not. So I'm going to start the car. Put on the AC that works up. Um, <sighs> I've not started the car this morning, so um, this is like the first uh, start today. Okay. Um, Uh, so so I'm going to wait for oh let me switch up the radio. So I'm going to wait for uh, the combustion to drop a little the engine speed. Um, so 
so that uh, you will get a little bit warm before I put on the AC. So the Nakara, so you can see, is still at 1000 RPM. So at this time, the engine is running which is uh, consuming a little bit excess fuel, which is normal. So I will need to wait for it to drop down a little before I can put on the AC. I don't like putting it on because at that time it's expected the oil. You know, uh, I just want at that time it my, it's not that it's still cold, very very cold, and uh, so I need it to circulate, get to everywhere before you add load to the engine. Uh, so you can see it has started dropping. So, so it doesn't mean the oil is warm now, but at least uh, it's much better. Okay, so uh, I'm going to put on the AC. Video recording starts. Okay. So the AC is on now. Oh, so you can hear. You can see the fan is now at very high, at high speed. Wow. You shouldn't be at the fan at this fan. You shouldn't be at the fan at this fan. The fan is supposed to, it will start spinning after some seconds. But um, it will take really, really more than the fan to do, unless you remove it. And you can see the fan is actually not This has been here for a long time, so because of that, it has affected the farm mode. So I think this issue has been here, but I didn't notice it until uh, recently. So, so that's why it's not good to, it's not actually good to, um, to like people that go and bypass their farm from factory connection and run it to be spinning constantly. So let me switch up the AC. Uh, so it's not good for people that uh, uh, go and bypass fan. You can see how it kills fan. So like I said, this fan, uh, when this thing, whenever, I don't know when it happened, but it eventually killed the, the fan motor because the fan motor is now wobbling. Because it's now, it has been spinning very fast for a long time. I didn't know because, of course, the fan was working, but I was noticing the the temperature was get, taking too long to get to where it's supposed to be uh, when the engine is warm or hot so it eventually affected the farm boot as well so but anyway it doesn't matter um, because the fan is going to be all oh, the move completely and um, so avoid doing all those bypass in fact, this video is not even for those that bypass their factory fan connection. There's no point because you can't even do this kind of test. Uh, but you can see what you are doing to your vehicle. Because with your, if the fan comes up constantly, I'll be spinning like this. Or even f there are those some of the people that do that bypass. It won't be faster. The fan speed will even be higher than what you had. Uh, so it will make your engine oil thicker, longer than it should. Uh, cooling system colder, longer than you should. We increase the fuel consumption. It makes your fuel just to stay higher, longer than it should. So, okay, so um, that's what I wanted to show you guys. So, when I, when, after I must have removed this, the fan and put the other fan, uh, which uh, the low speed works, uh, hopefully. Uh, in that case, we'll first do the same test again so I can see whether the fan speed will come up. Uh, this um we can look okay let's look at the ambient temperature so i can see uh, the fan wasn't supposed to come up at that um you can see okay so you can see it's 28 degrees celsius so um the fan shouldn't come the high speed shouldn't come up at this um Temperature, ambient temperature. So uh, now you understand why um, uh, one of the ways you can do the test. So if the ambient temperature is not that uh, hot, if it's less than 40, if I, even if it's at 35 degrees Celsius, and you start the put on the AC, if the high speed should still will not come up, it shouldn't come up at that time. Uh, should, the engine was supposed to long, run for a long time with that uh, 35 to 37 degrees Celsius before the high speed may come up, spin for a few seconds, then goes off back to the lower speed. 
Um, so remember, it's not as I'm saying there are two fans, high speed, low fan speed. No, I'm saying the control, the speed of the fan. So I'm just using the word high speed fan, low speed fan. So, but it's just one fan doing the dual work. Okay, so so I'm going to start the work proper and um, set up the camera uh, because I, I would like. If possible, I'll be able to set up the camera so I'm able to show how I'll be able to remove that uh, fan connector, the wiring connector on the fan. You know, because it can, it's not that easy. It's not programmed. It's not something. Yeah. Well, hopefully you guys be able to see it. If not, well, uh, let's see how it goes. So uh, as you can see, the fan has been removed. Oh. There's a small leather that I stuck here at the foot. Um, okay, so, but uh, remember what I taught you guys uh, on the D2, the 407 cooter, this one, when I changed the fan. Um, you have one option. You either um, disconnect the battery terminal or you disconnect uh, the uh the connection to the fan the positive and negative supply but in this case so what i because the wiring connect all those things are somewhere here so i decided to disconnect the relay uh, i can see that relay yeah um that's a 45 amps relay so i needed i disconnected it so because of that now the power supply to the fan is off so um so what i did was i did it like i said this is the power sailing I believe so. Yeah, the power steering pipe. Uh, you know, this guy is valuable ratio steering, not necessarily uh, the conventional power steering. Now, what I mean by valuable ratio steering, that's the, the higher the vehicle speed, the firmer and heavier the steering wheel becomes. The lower the vehicle speed, the lighter the steering wheel becomes. So, it's actually a performance steering system. So, so what I did was to, because to not affect this, I won't have to start shifting and end up damaging this uh, uh, the steering pipe. Uh, and I pulled it from under. So, um, so I lose the four bolts. Uh, these are the bolts. Uh, I see them here. So, so I removed the four bolts here. You can see. So, and I'll drop it from down. Then I can see the wire is long enough. So, and um, this wire, there are holes there that are holding the wire. So, I disconnected this. Is put it out. The second one is somewhere there. So, as it is now, um, so you can see, okay, this is the farm motor. This is the, the farm motor somewhere here. Now, this is that resistor. And uh, the way it is, it's actually part of the, the as if it's uh, integrated uh, permanently attached to the motor but we'll see until I remove it so what I'm going to do you can see these three bolts here uh, this hole is here so that's what I need to remove first I see one this other one and there's another here so I'll, I'll from here losing it with um, this is two. Uh, let's see. What if I try to show you guys? Oh, no. Okay, one is out. Um, only the second one, not not uh, is a screw, not uh, bolt. So star screw. Um, so second one is out. Uh, so this is the last one. Um, this is the one holding the. Okay, so 
find this art too. Yes, it says here it's very small, so um, now you have you need to remove this. There's um, a small metal here that is holding the connector down onto the the farm motor. Uh, so I need to get something, pull it out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now it's off. So what I need to do now is to remove the motor. Um, So use my big hands for this. Let's see. Okay, you know what? Let me just drop the camera like this. I don't know if we'll be able to show. Um, okay. Coal. Um, so this coal is out. So now you can see the farm motor here, and what they call engine. So this is a connector. Uh, so you can easily pull it out. Ooh, ooh, ah, you can see. So um, so I mean it's not independent of the farm coal. So all you need to is to now get another farm and then plug it back in, mount everything back. So now this is the resistor, you can see it here. That's the, the resistor. But you can, you can see from here, the motor is permanent, it's actually permanently attached on the motor is here, this one, under this metal. So, uh, I think it's permanently attached. You can still probably see my remove it. Maybe I'll make an attempt. Later. But, like I said, it's pointless. Because if you are going to, if let's assume the problem is only this, and I can be able to remove this metal, the motor is here, it's pointless. Because if you try, you see, <laughs> it is all right because you are buying the complete to get this. Let's assume this is independent. To, to get this, you see, buy it with this. So, I mean, that's, it's just useless. So once it fails, so what my point is what controls the lower speed of the fan and the higher speed of the fan is here. So I'm my in fact, let me put it in a different way. What controls this is this. But it's permanently uh, maybe you can see the separated base but that point here because the two of them are almost the same unit. It's a unit now. So so I'm going to pause the video and get the other fan motor and then Attach, reassemble. I might not really need to show the video. Okay, let's see. Maybe I might. Uh, maybe what I'll do, I'll get another. I'll get a stand. Uh, camera stands. Keep it somewhere while I'm doing that. Okay. Okay, so. Um, so you can see the two fan here. Uh, so this is what I'm going to use. And. Um, uh, so this is the one we moved, the one that uh, only the high seat is working and it's wobbling. So we'll test this and see what happens. So um, I'm not going to do this. So let me see if I can set up this camera. Um, let's see. I'll keep it so I can stay hopeless. Um, okay, I think that's good enough. Yeah. Okay, so um, first thing you do is to you can see the connector. Um, so you have to let me see, swap it in, plug it back in. Uh, it has a square shape. Let me show you. 
Um, uh, okay. Mm, uh, so it goes in. All right. Um, something I notice here. This connector, the, it peeled off a little. So what I'm going to do is, um, uh, I'm going to insulate it. It's actually really naked, and that is most likely the positive. Hold on, let me remove it again. Dangerous. Mm, can be dangerous, as you can see. Positive and negative. These two thick wires are positive and negative, and they virtually paid off, so they shouldn't even touch each other. So I will have to deal with this. Um, we need to separate the two and uh, cover each of them so that they won't have to touch each other. Uh, okay, so uh, I'm going to pause the video and uh, figure out what I to use here. Um, maybe a gun, tape, or whatever. Okay, so I'll get back to you guys. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to video. I'm not going to video. I can't talk to you. You can come back later. Okay, so um, as you can see, I've been able to insulate uh, this. And um, so this covered it very, very well. Uh, of course, I use a tape to do that. Easy. Please, go. So. Um, so I think this is covered, uh, but probably in the future, if I will ever have to change the fan again, um, either I will change this connector here, maybe at this point, because um, I still have another one I can use. Um, this one from the 407, uh, I can see the wire is much shorter. So, um, yeah, I can see this much better. So, can I always change it, use it, cut this one, join it here. Um, I still prefer it, I'm changing the entire wire. I just don't want to go that route, start pulling the wire. But I'll see how it goes. Anyway, but at least now, uh, this is taken care of. Uh, okay, let's see. Um, I think uh, okay, it's okay like this. Okay, so let's start work. Alright, so the next thing to do now is to... The, this is the coal, fan coal. So we need to marry the two together. Um, okay, remember there's a particular position. Uh, I have to work follow where the connector is. Um, let's see. Um, hmm. wires on the coal. Um, then uh, remember this. So this particular side that has this hole has to be behind. 
I'll find a way to let me show you. I have to press it like this. No, not like this. This. So this one is supposed to stay here. So I come to hold the connector, stop the connector from pulling out from the uh, the motor. So I uh, need to press it so I can be able to. Um, I got it twice. So uh, let's see. So you can see it's back in. So I'm going to turn the fan now the other way around so that uh, from there I can not touch. So the holes where the screws were removed are now position. So if you want to get it right to get those three holes set, you have to first deal with this particular where the connector is. Once you set it in last, then you can now uh, start to put uh, the screws. Um, where is the other screwdriver? Okay. Okay, I'm almost in. Oh. Okay, one is in, but I'm not tight it fully. Um, that is the other screen, that two screws. Um, that is one. Uh, and the third one. Third one. Okay, so this is the third one. So this one goes in. The last one, which is the third one, now goes to uh, okay. to set the okay. Hold on, I need to set that one down. The one on the... Hold on. Okay, set now. Like I was telling you guys, it's not... Uh, 
that's easy to replace this connector all like the one i did on the on the phone so Okay, this one is in now. So I'm going to tighten it fully. Easily start with the, the next time. Easily start with that um, the screw holding the that metal on the, uh, behind the the wiring connector on the front screw. Oh, okay. It is much faster that way. Okay. All right. So it's set. Now let's see. Uh, it's set. Uh, so what's many now is to put back the fan. Uh, let's see. Okay, so you push it in. I didn't need to jack it up. So what you do is push it in something like this. Then um yeah. okay so it's in um i don't know how to align it on the top um So um, yeah, I'm going to do a step. Uh, first, uh, hold this. Uh, this one of the bows, ten bows here. So hold this side. Then uh, this one to so align so that the is set very well. So um, number. So I'm putting back those. Uh, Plastic guide on the fan harness. Uh, I'm folding it on the. Okay, so. Okay. Okay, so the next one is. Try to turn this one on top. Uh, on the right side on that okay so now I'll be using this um uh pen spanner and our guide Oh man, my waist. Uh, so I'm not guide the entire boat tight and very well, and then we'll run the test. So I think I probably may need to switch off the camera now, so I won't take too long to guide the boat. Then start the car, test it, see whether the low speed will run or the high speed will run. Um, 
qua vediamo il famiglio di Vuitton allora mi switch it on perché ti take too long ok um. ok so um come back with the Oh, since I went off for a while. So, I'm back. Um, so, I've mounted everything back. Let me show you guys. Um, so, that's it. Everything is back. Mounted back. And uh, we connected the lid. Um, so, let's see. Let's start with time. Um, what is it? So, like I mentioned earlier, uh, from here it doesn't have the option of low speed, it's only the high speed fan that I can actually test from using PP2000. Um, so, let's see. So, it won't tell you whether the low speed is there working or not because it's only the high speed you can test. Um, that's it. Uh, so let's find that. So, so it says, I see uh, to make sure I ended, no fault detected. So, um, uh, let's see. Okay, no fault. Alright, so let's start the car. So, um, let's see with the AC. Let's see how the fan will be. Normally, once I use this version of BP2000, it will reset the date and the time. So, uh, this is uh, 36 degrees Celsius. Uh, remember, the other one was 26, 28 degrees Celsius, yeah, 28 degrees Celsius. And now it's that ambient temperature 36. So, um, so, let's see if uh, the low speed works. In that case, I'm uh, have to switch off the car and restart. Okay, oh, it won't work because it's taking a while for the, the fan to come up. So, um, the only way for me to know how good the low speed works is until I put on the AC. I see this is running now, so AC is not up. Not on, so put on the AC, run it for, for uh, uh, put on the AC, run it, then switch it off, uh, see, so that the fan 
eventually we reduce a little. Uh, so the, at this degree Celsius, the fan speed is supposed to be a little bit higher than when it was uh, 30, 28. So, but still, even at 7 degrees Celsius, this particular speed now, this particular fan, it wasn't as high as when the other fan that's at 28 degrees Celsius was almost at the high peak. Uh, so, so, okay, I'll switch on the AC. Um, Conditioning. Uh, my screen is a little bit uh, not that bright. You can reduce the. Uh -huh, so look at the fan speed. So you can see the AC uh, air conditioning. Yeah, the first. Uh, Input and authorization is no, so the AC is off. Uh, fan is reference speed is zero percent. So let's put on the, the AC. I uh, can see it's now authorization, yes. So the fan speed reference 70 degrees Celsius, okay, uh, 70 percent. Uh, pulling fan speed. That reference speed is 56%. Uh, it said low speed, it said approximately 20%. High speed, approximately 100%. So right now it's spinning at 56%. Um, so, so as the AC is running now, uh, 56 percent uh, ambient temperature, which is, you can see air temperature. Okay, now this for the engine. Uh, engine air temperature. So ambient temperature is at five. Um, so uh, I think the speed. Before now, the other, with the other fan, if I switch on the AC, even from here, I'll be hearing the sound of the fan. But this one. I don't actually hear the fan speed. Maybe just a little. Unlike the other one will be shouting. So uh, we'll see. So I think this is much better compared to uh, okay, what I should have done with the old fan at that before I remove it was to check at what speed it was spinning at that 28 uh, degrees Celsius. The percentage, the cooling fan speed. So at 56 percent at um, uh, 36 uh, MBA temperature with engine cooling temperature. Engine cooling temperature is 74 degrees Celsius. Coolant temperature. Uh, oil temperature 86 degrees Celsius. Um, so I think it's, uh, it's much better. Uh, fortunately, it's not a new fan. I uh, couldn't get the exact, like I said, all the fans, if I can't get the exact uh, new fan for the particular model of the, uh, for this Z9 or the D2 VCs, 
There's no point. The new one for four cylinders are available, but the V6 ones are not available. So to me, it doesn't make sense to go and buy uh, the, the new four cylinder when I know it still will not be uh, good enough for the engine or the vehicle. So I decided to go for get a used one, uh, which in that case I can't tell whether it's for V6 or this thing, but it makes more sense not to spend so much on something that is still not adequate or you, know, you are not sure. So this used one is probably for four cylinder, I don't know. So I'll use it and observe. And then take it for a drive, see how the temperature gauge behaves with the fan and the rest. So I think uh, this have come to the conclusion of uh, this system of the whole thing. I believe you must have learned. Yeah, it's a long video, but uh, you know, I thought uh, I touched a lot of things. It's more like a tutorial video. I touched so many things. How you can for the Z9. It's not just Z9, but for how you can disconnect the fan, remove the fan. Uh, from the fan coil, disconnect the the connector, so you can actually swap the fan motor well, without uh, the using that connector. Uh, so for Z9, you can see there's no point for you to change the entire wiring harness. Uh, what else? Okay, let me switch up the switch. Uh, let me do it now. You can see now I'm not hearing the fan sound. You know, unlike before, we were just shouting. Probably uh, because the fan was also wobbling, it, it, it added to the noise of the old, the other old fan. Uh, so, what else? Um, also, other things I I talked about show how to do, uh, how to diagnose. Uh, for several, for, in fact, all Pojo can you of whether which Pojo model is it? As far as it has an electric fan, you know, how you can diagnose to know whether the lower speed fan is working, the high speed fan is working. Uh, what else did I talk, show on this video? Um, um, I, don't, I can't remember everything, but you know, I mean, it was quite a uh, tutorial one, good one. So I don't want people to learn how to do some of this. And for those who are saying, hey, I'm here to learn, you're not teaching me anything. Um, you know, yeah, once in a while I would do a free something so that people will learn and transfer that knowledge. I will bet most most users, most mechanics, most project technicians don't even know how to do all these diagnoses that I did or how to swap this uh, fan wiring connector for the 407 or the Z9607. But now you know you can, how you can do it or that is even possible to do it. Another thing I also uh, thought on this video was uh, the impossibility of uh, distaching or separating the the fan uh, resistor from the fan motor, uh, what they call fan engine. You know, I just call it fan. It's fan motor anyway. So it's there are just two of them are uh, integrated with each other. So that part is a unit, so you can't separate it the way they did it. So um, because of that, I consider it as a poor design on the part of Pojo. Yeah, it wasn't a very... I think that's why they stopped using it. After 407 Z9, they realized it, was a, it wasn't a good design. So they stopped using that system. So ever since then, they've gone back to the normal way of using a separate module from the fan to control the fan speed so that if there's a problem with the speed of the fan you, you know low or high you, do, you deal with that model not the fan you know so that is it okay so i think uh, once in a while i'll be doing this kind of it problem the problem is time i usually don't have time to you know uh, yeah, I work on my cars, mostly my, by myself. It's only when I don't have time I take it in workshop and then supervise the work. But personally, I just prefer doing, especially electric cars, I do it myself. Or even some mechanicals, I do some of this work myself. But then, uh, making that time to be doing video, why are they? Because the video will drag the, the repair, you know, slow it down. Uh, the you know it really is sort of lasting uh, maybe 30 minutes one hour it will take longer because you have to keep explaining as you are doing this and that so it's when i had the time like today i had the time because it's sunday um 
Saturdays, I hardly have time for my own personal cars. Usually other people cars when I'm available for car repairs. So you can see. And when I'm doing other people cars, most times I don't really have time for doing videos unless it's not that severe work or I have the time or even remember about it. So but this one is very important because most people don't know about this Z9. You know, so at least now you learn something about Z9. If you're interested in buying Z9, you, you learn a lot of things now. Uh, likewise, for so seven users, I also learned about the fan. Um, then other Pojo users, you learn also how you can diagnose yours uh, without necessarily using the this thing. But this makes it much faster. But as far as four seven six or seven concerned, you can only test the high speed using PP2000 or Diabus. You can't test the low speed. That function, you can see the option is not was not there. You didn't put it. So. Um, Okay, so that's the end of the video. Um, so I started the car to let it to idle until without AC. Now I can see the fan has started spinning without AC. Hi, good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, oh, let me see. Uh, I'll go back to you. So, um, so let me see the start again. Um, at night, it pull out temperature 95 degrees Celsius so the fan speed is still zero uh, fan will be inactive uh, I'm trying to see if I can get show this before um, the battery is about to go down the laptop battery uh, Uh, showing 98 degrees Celsius. Okay, so the fan comes up at 98 coolant temperature. 90, so it can see cooling fan speed 22 uh, percent. So let's look at the the fan now. You can see how you can see you're not having any fan fan now. So the low speed is working on this one uh, compared to. The other one, which I tested both on AC and without AC, and we maintain high speed. Um, so you can see cooling fan speed 37 degree, 37 percent, not degree. Come back to 27 percent, and uh, reference <coughs> reference speed is uh, 33 percent fan reference speed. So let's see at what temperature the fan goes off. Right now it's showing 96 coolant temperature, 96 degrees Celsius. Okay, it has gone off. So the fan went off at 96 degrees Celsius. Oh, button. Okay, so now we've learned this one too. So for those who are uh, messing up their firing, fan wiring connection, really, you can see that your EG is meant to run very hot. And um, even the oil temperature, uh, let me see, was actually around. 120 uh, oh it's even 144 degrees Celsius the oil temperature you can see at uh, current temperature 996 uh, uh, 98 okay the fan is back on uh, the oil temperature uh, I don't think uh, probably that one may not be that accurately correct so uh, but from here, you see, I see it hasn't even got into 140, it's around 120 here. Okay, so, oh, the battery has gone off. So, so don't uh, mess up your engine cooling system. Uh, it's not good. Not good. Your engine is meant to run very hot. The fan comes up around 98 degrees Celsius. Um, the and then goes off that without AC, it comes up at very low speed, uh, then goes off around 96 degrees Celsius. So, between it hovers between 96 to 98, the fan will come up, bring it down to like 96, 95. Then, when it call, goes up again to 98 degrees Celsius, it comes up. So, that is for Z9 V6. Um, for other Pojo models, some comes up around 102 degrees Celsius. The fan, low speed, not even high speed. Uh, some cause up uh, depending on how old the vehicle is, the system. There are some that cause up around 97, 
no, 88 or so. The sun comes up before it even gets to 90 degrees Celsius. Then for Z9, now you see when it comes up. So, but if you abuse your cooling system, it stays permanently less than 60 degrees Celsius, which is bad for your engine. So, your engine cooling temperature is supposed to run very, very hot. That's why the fan regulates it, so it stays hot above 90 degrees Celsius. Um, now, from the Z9, it's obvious that the oil temperature, which is this one, is more accurate. This one is more accurate than what the system, was, the laptop was showing me. Uh, because the laptop was showing almost above 140, it's as if you had entered red. The temperature is too, too very dangerous for the engine, but you can see it's uh, um, showing one, almost 120. No, it's, it's, it hasn't even gotten to 120. Right now it's about 115. Uh, about 100, let's just say about 100 degrees. Uh, okay, no, like 110, there about. It hasn't gotten, it's not pointing exactly at 120. Another thing to point out is now the temperature gauge, the needle is pointing exactly at 90 here. Why did the other fan was there? It was always below, a little bit uh, below 90 because the fan was constantly spinning at uh, uh, high, high, very high speed. So yeah, this fan is much better than the other one. Uh, how long will it last? I don't know because it's a used fan, uh, but it's, it's much better now. So, okay. So I think that's all.